Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer here. I am joined again <laughs> by Timothy with Elite Transportation Partners out of Kansas City. Uh, this time, hopefully, uh, there will be video on both sides. Um, today, we wanted to talk. Oh, thanks for coming, Timothy. Really oh, appreciate hey, great it. To be here. It's been too long. It's been over a month. We're trying to do one or two of these a month to help out our great uh, Facebook group and our partners. So you've been traveling a little bit. And uh, I took a little bit of time off last month. So I'm glad we're getting back with it this month. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, someone posted, and, and I see this quite often, every few weeks, someone posts about people comparing them to Uber and Lyft, or people, you know, just saying they're too expensive. And, you know, how do you handle that objection? And so, uh, while I've never own a car service company myself. I'm going to let Timothy mainly handle this, but I have listened to hundreds of calls and, um, you know, what Timothy is, is going to go over here, it, it, it does work. So um, what would you say? I, I made a comment in the group that said, you know, by that point, if they ask that, it might be too late and you likely yeah. haven't demonstrated enough value because then they wouldn't be asking that, right? So right. can you you're, walk you're so, right. you're so right, Mark. It really begins with, you know, if you get an objection, you, you haven't provided enough value for them to listen to you. And, and keep in mind, you know, where are your calls coming from? Are they call, you know, everybody uses different lead sources and where are they coming from? You know, if they wanted Uber and Lyft, they would go to their app, right? But for whatever reason, someone has bragged about car service or, They've seen it. They've been a little jealous at the airport. And thought, hey, what, what, what do rich people do? You know, how's that feel, right? Um, and, and, and even though the quality of our leads are off the rails, uh, where that helps solve some objections, not getting them because of our lead sources, we are going to get that objection. So number one is, and I said this, and not to insult anybody or butt hurt anybody, but if you won't, re not, if you're not willing to return every lead call you get wherever you get your leads from you're lazy. I'm just going to say it, you're lazy. And I had a guy just this morning, I was telling Mark this morning, a guy said, don't call, but the response on the, my little market app was, don't call, just give me a quote. And I said, well, um, that's not how we operate. I said, first of all, you didn't give complete information, you know, like a pickup address. Uh, you just put in a zip code and I wouldn't want you to miss out on any discounts. And that's why we need less than a three minute call. He messaged me back and said, if you refuse to give me a quote, I'll just go find somebody else. I said, well, have a great day. I said a few other things, but I, I did say have a great day. And because not all business is good business. When you're desperate and you're doing one ride a day, you feel that desperation. And yep. when you're not when you're not desperate, I, I can walk away from that because you know what? We have 14 rides booked tomorrow for a concert. So we yeah. have you know, $3,000 day booked tomorrow. So I'm not worried about today. I can care less about you know a, an airport run today. So. Yeah. But number one, you have to commit to speaking to the client. Now, I know why some of you probably prefer the text because the longer I've been in the space, I've got to believe less than 60% of operators are Americans. <laughs> you know, and that's a great thing. I mean, I, I mean, I think, this, you know, immigrants come in and they can drive as good as anybody, but boy, that language barrier comes in. And so my advice to you, and I say, you know, I'm Asian, half Chinese, but I was born here. I was raised in the Miami-Dade School District, so if my English or math was off occasionally, you know, because <laughs> I was raised in the city of Miami. But if I went to uh, China or Japan or India, I would want to constantly be improving my language skills. Because I talk to 10 or 12 of you a week, and I, I say to you, no offense, but I can't understand you. So maybe that's keeping you. So if that were me and I had a beautiful fleet great drivers, I would bring in an English speaking person to handle those calls. So let's just, let's just be real and honest about yeah, that. Yeah, that's just you reality. Know, yeah, you dropped me in China today and, and I don't care if your name's Chen, you know, <laughs> you know, we don't understand you speaking English, right? Yeah. And so the reality, so you need to look at someone who can speak great English and communicate because, you know, because when you, when they pick it up and your accent is so thick, they're thinking Uber. They're thinking Lyft because so many immigrants are in that space. So that's up to you, you take that bit of advice and bake it or not bake it, reject it. But yeah. number, but the most important thing is we talk to every client. 
Yeah. And we start off with hi, this is Timothy with Elite Transportation Partners. Your lead just came in about two minutes ago. Oh, by the way, we, we call within three minutes. We have redundant systems. Well, there's three of us. So if I'm out on a ride or if I'm going to the bathroom or yeah. you know, I'm going to the movie with my girlfriend on a Friday afternoon, there's a person that can answer the call within three minutes. Yeah, that that's huge, especially for airport transfers. And, and by the way, I used to, uh, what the industry used to do uh, and still does for a large part years ago was just send an email quote like 30 to 60 minutes later. And so I got to thinking, well, um, you know, what would be better than that? Oh, we should be texting them. And um, I, I I still recommend for, for some larger businesses, they just don't have the bandwidth uh, or the staff. But if you're a newer operator, you need to learn how to close over the phone, right? Well, and it's so easy because, you know, I, I've told this story before. Here's what we're seeing on a on a daily basis. Because of, the, of COVID, the air, uh, airport rental companies all sold off half their fleets. And so where Avis maybe would have had 300 cars at Kansas City International, they only have 100. Well, yeah. if 10 people don't bring their car back today, there's 10 people on airplanes who are getting a text midair, sorry, we don't have a car. Yeah. And, they're, and they're, so they're laying over in Atlanta, they're Googling airport transportation, we're number one, by the way. They call us and we get them, but if I don't respond within a couple of minutes, they're right on to, you know, whatever. Exactly. And so and yep. here's the other thing. Once you see a price in print, it's a yes or no. There's no, there's no room to move them. Exactly. And, and, That's huge. You know, and then when, and when I was an insurance mark, I had 100 agents. And over a 10-year period, all state, American family, farmers, you know, state farm, we're all going to be the same over a 10-year period. But there's going to be dips of what, one's higher, one's cheaper, one's lower, right? And so the thing is, if they'll come to me for five dollars, they'll leave me for five dollars. <laughs> yeah. But if they come to me for the value, the one, the price doesn't matter. Exactly. Now, within reason, within, sure, I mean, sure, I, sure. If I can't be eight hundred dollars higher than the State Farm and expect yep. the client to stay. So, so you quoted them one thirty-five. They got a quote for one thirty. You both texted them. They didn't get to talk to the owner, which I cannot emphasize. When I return, by the way, you're talking to the owner. Yeah. This is my private cell phone, and it's answered from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. I am? Really? You're the owner? Yeah. You're dealing with the head chief. And, 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 and they go, wow, we, we, we're talking to these people that don't even call us back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, again, if so the minute you give a quote, you've won or lost. Exactly. There's, there's no salesmanship in there. To let them know that you're worth five dollars more, or ten, or fifteen, or twenty, or thirty, or whatever difference you are, right? So when we call in, if you've never seen a lead, uh, and like I said, I'm, everybody knows I'm the biggest fan of Mark and his company, but we have lead forms with everything you'd ever want to know. But guess what? People make mistakes on there. They put wrong dates on there. They put six a.m. instead of six p.m. You know, yeah. they put street instead of terrace, right? Yeah. None of those things that you want to find out when your driver's out going, Tim, there's no street. Oh my gosh, we didn't know, you know, oh. And now we're calling you, we're 10 minutes late. Also, do they so, live in that, sorry, I'm gonna hop in real quick. Yeah. Also, do they live in that city and they're going to the airport or are they flying in? Well, yeah. you can kind of tell that by if you're picking them up at the airport, right. but right. you know, having that conversation, if you are picking them up at the airport, you know, there's a good chance they could live there, but maybe they're just coming to stay for a few days. What are they also going to need? Right. So what I say to Mark, I say, so are you coming home or coming for a visit? Yeah. You know, what's yeah. basically what's, or are you coming for business or pleasure? Yeah. So anyway, so we say, hey, Mark, this is Tim. With, and they'll go, wow, that was fast. You know, <laughs> we're fast. Yeah. You know, and uh, some have been waiting days for a return call, right? Yeah. So you get to stick out immediately where if you just quoted them, you know, there's that. So then I go, hey, we just want to confirm a few things. Is that be okay? Yeah. So it looks like you want to travel on August the 8th. Is that correct? Yes. And right now you have a 3 a.m. pickup time. I'm just curious, what time's your flight? Seven o'clock. Well, just so you know, at that time of day on Thursday, it's going to take us about 31 minutes to get you to the airport. You really want to be there three and a half hours early. Oh, no, I just, I didn't know. I just thought, you know, I said, well, how would you like to sleep like maybe an extra hour and a half? Oh, I'd love to sleep. Now I'm an advisor. I'm a trip advisor. Yeah. 
You know, I'm not a, I'm not a 135 quote. So I said, if you're, so then I go, comes down to how early do you want to be there before your flight? Well, an hour and a half. Okay, great. So to be there an hour and a half early, here's what time we can pick. Oh, thank you. I love the sleep. As I said, told my drivers, they appreciate every extra minute. You know. So you're already um, providing value at that point. Uh, yeah, I'm a trip advisor. Yep. Uh, I'm a trip, and especially elderly people. They've heard horror stories. And so we had a horror story the other day. Guy, guy wanted to be there five hours early, right? Want to be picked up at 2 a.m. for a 7 a.m. flight. No matter what I did to try to convince him, he would not. He said, I missed a flight 10 years ago. And by God, I'm never <laughs> leaving a flight. I said, I think his name is Brian. I said, Brian, no one's in the airport at 2 a.m. Not a, not a chance in the airport, right? Yeah. You won't even find a vending machine open. You know, like, so, yeah. I said, you know, he's what. So my driver picked up and said, his wife and kids cursed him all the way up there for making him get up early. And they got them to go one of the soul there, you know. And uh, sure. but anyway, so I go, really, you know, really, Mark, how early do you, well, I'm a seasoned traveler. I like to be there an hour early. Well, if you're a 7 a.m. flight, let's do 530. Just give yeah, them a little to bit. to be safe. Those. Sure. But you don't, we don't need to get you three. Oh, yeah. okay, also, are they there. TSA? I've never really thought about that, but. You know, that, right. that's a big one right there. I'm TSA. My wife isn't. So what does that go. mean? I right. have to always go uh, earlier, right? Because right. unless everyone's TSA. <laughs> so uh, then I see we're going to pick you up at blah, 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 Street, Oakland Park. Oh, no, that's Terrence. Wow, I'm glad we caught that now. You know, because that could make a big difference on us being on time or late. And so I see here that you're going to have four passengers. Uh, how much luggage do you plan on taking? Well, we're going to have four good size bags and four carry ons. I said, the reason we asked that, Mark, we don't want to be like some other companies that show up with a car that's too small. So yeah. uh, we're, we're going to bring our big SUV. So I'm already setting up, up for the price. We're bringing our biggest vehicle, our Lincoln Navigator Stretch, and it holds up to six riders, eight bags. We'll have plenty of room for everybody. Oh, great. We hate being cramped. Yeah, us too, right? But we want to make sure we have the right car. So let me ask you a question. You're going on. Pleasure, or you know, no, yeah. we're going on vacation, and and uh, wow. What does that tell you, right? That yeah. tells you, you know, they're not, yeah, they're but, not yeah. writing. It's not a write-off, right? So, but a family of four spending a lot of money to go on vacation. Yeah, you know? and so, uh, so anyway, so great. Well, I think we have all the pertinent information we need. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our company and what makes us different. Now, first of all, you'll be just really, you know, satisfied to know. That all of our drivers are CPR, first aid, and AED certified. Which that means, Mark, is if you, I know you have young children. If one of your children choked on something, you had a medical event, we're not saying we could save their lives, but we could certainly assess until help arrived. Or an older person. I'm sure or if it's exactly, like we, someone who's like 25, you know, that well, might yeah, not be. Or, yeah. or what I'm saying is, or your senior mom, you're trusting to us. Yeah. You know, we could be the, so I said, and so, we want to offer you that peace of mind that we could at least assist. And as far as I know, Mark, we're the only company in the entire country that certifies all of our drivers. Yeah. Wow. Just one and more note in all this yeah. Timothy's saying, um, you always have to feel the other side, right? If they're talking fast, if they're kind of, you don't want to spend a bunch of time, it just shows poor social awareness. But if they're with you, you know, I completely recommend this. Well, and none of our calls are more than about four minutes. Okay. I mean, I could go once you get in the rhythm of this, you know. Second of all, we provide a significant pre flight snack meal for all of our guests. Now, they go, Really? We've never gotten snacks before. And I'm going to do a video probably this weekend showing what's in our kit. I'm finally going to do the big reveal of what <laughs> all's in our kit uh, because it's very substantial. And I go, The airlines don't feed anymore, so we do. Go, <laughs> I like that, that line. That's yeah, a good line. We do, so we do. Yeah. And and so 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 here's uh, so for that ride, normally that ride is $150 in our biggest, nicest vehicle. However, you're a first time guest, we have a first time guest discount. So that would only be only be $130. I now love 130 that. is our bottom line price that we want to get anyway. Right. Yeah. And that's so all in? Is that all in? all in? That's 130 Important. No, no, no extra fees. No hidden charges plus gratuity. That the now, now you've done two things. One, they know next time what the price is. Yeah. So when that executive assistant calls me the next time, we don't talk about price. Yeah. It's 150. Yeah. 
I've never had a complaint. Never had a complaint. Yeah. Because I set them up. They, so everyone wants to feel like they're getting a deal. When I just go back 135, how do I not know that's your everyday rate? Yeah. I want a, I want a first, first time client rate. Yeah. Or I want a veteran discount. Or I want a first response, whatever discount you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, um, and now we also be needing a return trip because we offer a discount on that as well. Oh, yeah, we will need a return trip. Great. We're going to take $10 off your return trip. So that would only be 140. So 140 and 130 is 270 plus gratuity. Would you like to go ahead and put, let's book it right now? I love that. And do you, yeah. so you do the 15% off their first ride and then an extra uh, 10, bucks. 10, 10 bucks off their round trip ride. So 270 total. And look, most of these people, they are going to need some sort of round trip, right? You do not, you do not get that in the form. I guess that's something you could ask, but the more you ask in a form, the less people will actually fill it out. You don't want them I to agree. have That's like a 10 minute yeah. survey. And yeah. plus by not asking that in the form, it gives you a reason, which by the way, you have a great reason. Um, don't you typically say, oh, you, if they say, oh, why do we, can you just give me a quote over text? Um, you know, I want to get you the best rate. That's and I, it, though, we, I want to see how many of our discounts you qualify for up front. Yes. Now, here's the other thing. Whatever you hear on the phone, you're a specialist at. Well, I'm calling for my 80-year-old mother. Great. We specialize in elderly transportation. I'm calling because I'm sending my 16-year-old on his first flight by himself. Great. People trust us with their kids every day, and here's why. That's the key. Here's why, right? Because if We're someone said that to me, I'd be like, oh, this guy's just too – he's full of it. But if you have a here's reason – Yes. We're going to walk your teenager into the desk and make sure that he's on the check-in line at the right airline with the right oh, thing. I Where love they're that. going to text you that he is safely in the airport. Oh my gosh. I, I love that. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard that before. And here's, here's the underlying theme of everything we're discussing right now. When people say, and I think I already said this, but it's so important to remember when they say, when they compare you to Uber or Lyft, or they say you're too expensive. Again, if all you're doing is texting them a quote and helping them get from A to B, the truth is you are you might as well be Uber and Lyft. Sure, you might have a little bit nicer of a vehicle, um, but how you truly build value isn't by um, isn't by features. You know, a nice vehicle is a feature. It's by benefits. What can that nice vehicle do for them? Sure, it might not stink like an Uber or Lyft ride. I've had that happen before. Um, but how does that, that thing you're offering benefit them and then painting that picture, right? And that's exactly. essentially what you've done. It's we're this and here's why, right? Well, at any time, you know, it's the first thing you say when you're taking the risk, are you part of the traveling party? No, I'm calling for my boss. Boom. Yeah. You know, you got an executive. Yeah. So I'm going to hit that first aid training part pretty hard. Just so you know, if your executive were to have a heart attack or have a problem, we're going to be able to give them assistance until help arrives. Yeah. And, and they love that. I mean, one of the next big expenditures we'll do, and it's really a PR expenditure, is we'll probably spend $800 per car and put an AED, which is a heart defibrillator, uh, one in every car. Well, I guarantee you that'll make us one of a kind yeah, uh, you know, and you know, eight hundred dollars on marketing, big yeah. deal. It, yeah, it might sound crazy to, to people watching this because, like, I'm like, wait, who? But it, I might not need it, but you don't never know who you're driving, and it makes you unique, right? Who else is doing that? No one well, else. And again, to get a driver certified in those three areas is ninety dollars. Yeah. So we make our drivers pay for it themselves. That's their investment to join the company. Yeah, <laughs> I don't pay it. They do. Yeah. So if they're not willing to spend ninety dollars to get a forty-five to fifty-five dollar an hour driving job, they're not right for us anyway, right? Yeah. Um, and so I don't. But so cheap investment. Um, our bags when I do the reveal have has the retail value of probably eight to nine dollars. But the way we buy stuff wholesale, we've got about three bucks in every in every bag, and then we've got uh, you know we got a dollar and. 70 cents in our, you know, our luggage tag. And there's nothing yeah. that makes you more excited on that second trip with them where they have your luggage tags on there, right? Yeah. And that makes you feel good. And then we just spent $705 today 
to get kitchen conversion magnets done because those will go on every refrigerator, and, you know, flour to ounces, and you know, they'll use that every day in their um, thing, and our number's on there. And so it's top of mind in their home, their car, their office, and their luggage. If you want yeah. to top of mind. So now we've got, we're on their luggage, we're in their home, and you know, we're still not quite in the car or the office yet. But, you know, we're working on one PR thing at a time. But, yeah. You know, I spent $705 today for design and 500 magnets. Yeah. Uh, you know, so no one that I know has had, you know, there are a couple guys that hand out, you know, uh, these things. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but we're constantly at, we want to be top of mind. So there again, we've, we've had about four or five minutes to engage before price even comes in. I'm using words like, normally it's this, but it's only this. Yeah. And you're in our largest car, our yeah. nicest vehicle. So you're right? stacking value. You're stacking value. You tell them, and by the way, this is actually really well known when you sell from the stage on webinars, you stack value. Then you, you uh, I'm forgetting the word, you anchor the price, right, right? Of a higher price, but then you tell them, but since you're a first time client, whatever, this is that, you if know. You buy it today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, otherwise, when I was thinking about things because Mark knows me and we've developed a lot of friends in the group that we chat regularly. They, you know, know me as a kind of a marketing guru. My mind never shuts down, you know. So we're thinking, you know, why not advertise as Uber plus 20? I mean, if, if you want to compete with Uber, just be Uber plus 20. Whatever the Uber rate is, when you get in the car, we're going to add $20 for the, I mean, if you want to be a cheap, low, low end. Now, I'm doing something, um, I don't know if you saw my post this morning, um, so we, I think if you're going to be cheaper, so what we're getting, we're getting so many late night calls and all our cars are out from 11 to 1 and 3 to 6 a.m. I mean, all our cars are out every day, right? Yeah. But you know, we keep getting those calls and I hate turning business away, right? Yeah. So I have contracted as of the last two days um, with two Uber drivers uh, and I posted a picture today. One's got this beautiful Ram 1500 truck with a party package with lights and I mean, in the whole thing, right? And so I said to him, I said, and I know the guy's been begging to drive for me for six months. Yeah. And uh, the guy's very mature. He's an insurance underwriter, good conversation. I said, so what would you call? He lives about 30 minutes from the place. I said, what would you call from your house to them at the airport? He goes, I charge 50 bucks. In, in your truck? I mean, it's gorgeous, yeah. right? So it's now crazy. what we'll say is, hey, Mark, we appreciate your call. All of our luxury cars are out tonight. However, if you have a lot of luggage and you don't mind a luxury pickup truck, we even have got a party package in that truck. <laughs> we, can do the, we can do that for $99. Because yeah. he, he only wants 50. I'll, you know, I paid 16 for the lead most, most of the time, $14, $15 for the lead. I can still make 30 bucks, and he's got a beautiful $50,000 pickup truck. Yeah, I've got a gal with a BMW that said, we yeah. don't have our car now, but we do have affiliates we can hook you up with, and they'll take those rides all day long. So, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. another thing for newer operators. You know, you really want to have, um, I tell everyone, you, you kind of want to have a range. And if you don't have a range of vehicles, you know, like a cheaper option, a more expensive option, uh, then you need to make some relationships. Because even if you don't make anything on it and you pass the ride off, that still is providing value to that other operator and, you know, kind of like building up a credit with them, especially yeah. if you do that, you know, frequently. Of course, I always think you should make a little something off it. But um, just by taking care of that client, you're taking care of that person, uh, that client, and you're indeed. taking care. Uh, yeah. And the, the affiliate. Right. Right. So you're kind of like helping both of them out. And so, yeah, it, it's it's many times worth it uh, to do that. And so. Right. And so yeah. like right now, we just, you know, if I knew what our clientele is going to be six months ago when we started, I would have started with a totally different fleet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, right? Limo, yeah. Navigator, you know, everything's got to have a $120,000 Escalade. So you find out 60% of your rides are one person, you know, going 15 minutes away. Yep. Enough money to, um, you know, to, to put gas in your car. And the other question is, too, I mean, in our market, Mark, I'm not sure about out in California, Gas was down a dollar a gallon over a month ago. Yeah. So we trust we started in February when gas was two fifty. We never adjusted our price during the ride. We never did. Now, in fairness, 
I don't need to make any money for my company. Yeah. So in fairness, I had that luxury to just hold the line. We weren't losing, we're in the black, but you know, very narrow, narrow margins, right? Yeah. Um, but now that marketing, you know, gas has dropped a dollar a gallon, I went out and spent seven hundred five dollars on marketing today. You know, what yeah. are you gonna do with that with that? What do you do with you go, you know, go on vacation? No, we're grinding, it's a two year grind. So that's another great lesson. Uh, what I see oftentimes, and I just talked to someone yesterday out of Colorado, he went and bought five, you know, he owns other businesses. He went and bought five vehicles, uh, like three stretch limos and two party buses. And, you know, obviously it's not his first business, but I was blown away because look, why are you going to go out and spend a few hundred grand, spend five grand on marketing figure out what is your market need? What is your market lack? Do the, do the market research. Don't buy the vehicle and then, you know, try to sell it, do it the other way around. It's yeah. like starting any business you need. There has to be a, a need you're solving for. Um, it's going to be the analytics. So like I said, we found out, cause I live, I live in the wealthy part of Kansas city. We thought most of our traffic was going to be here. Well, thanks to your marketing, 90% of our airport traffic. So, in September, I'm moving from 33 minutes from the airport to six minutes from the airport. Oh, see, that's a no-brainer. Half yeah. per drive and half the gas. Yeah. And so, but I didn't know that six months ago, or I would have moved to the airport six months yeah, ago. Yeah, no, right? for sure. And I was thinking today about if I were to start over, you know, I still would have started with my navigator because that's a one size fits all. Exactly. Yeah. I would not start with five navigators. And I'll tell you what, the most popular car in our fleet is my Lexus ES350. It's a 2016 mint condition. I paid $27,000 for it. And my top VIP executives love, they go, man, we love this car. You know? Really? And, nice. And today I'm going to pick up a 2019 Odyssey van, black, it's black, at top of the line, but it seats eight people. Wow. So for our concert runs where there's no luggage, that thing's going to be killer. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, you because know, now we can charge two hundred, and they can all pay twenty dollars each and cover the, you know, cover the ride. Yeah. But because um, right now we have our, you know, seven passenger navigators, and and so we right now we're at three cars. I'm trading in one of my SUVs. We we've got our our Lexus, our van, and our navigator. Yeah. And we're going to make. 16,000 this month, fifth month in business on three cars that still are sitting uh, idle half the day. Yeah. So there's plenty of growth to get to 30 or 40,000 with three cars a month. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. Uh, just to wrap up um, the, the whole price objection thing. So, um, you know, essentially you got to, you know, one, get on the phone, get on the phone quickly, you know, because they're going to book it, right? I mean, if it's an airport transfer, um, I mean, with any lead, you want to get on it quickly, but especially airport transfers, right? Um, and maybe at the airport calling you. Yeah. You know, of their layover. Yeah. And then really just asking the right questions, right? Uh, finding out, you know, who they are, where they're going, why they're going there. You know, do they need a round trip? Um, Luggage. Then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Luggage. And then, you know, once you've, you know, found out sufficiently about them. That's the most important part. Then you can tell them a little bit about yourself. If they're not like trying to rush you for, you know, a quote or whatever, you know, you need to feel this out. But, um, and then you mentioned all these, you know, things like the CPR thing. That's a really cool idea. Look, it doesn't have to be CPR or, or whatever it is, but finding something unique that you can offer that other people aren't, even if it sounds a little weird or crazy is such a great idea. And I love those snack pack that snack yeah. pack idea. Um, again, he's just, you know, finding out about them, where they're going, why they're going there, you know, um, offering some unique things no one else is. And then, so just stacking value, value, value. And then at the end, anchoring their price to a higher price, throwing in that first time client discount. If they still <laughs> say, oh, you're too, look, we most of the time. Call. Thank yeah. you for calling. We yeah, exactly. Exactly. But getting angry. Um, but before you get on every single call, you just need to tell yourself this might be someone who just this is not the right fit for them. Maybe they don't know how much a car service is. For those of us who work in the industry, we think it's crazy that people compare 
to Uber and Lyft. And I get it because you do this every day, you know the prices, but some people, this might be their first time ever booking a car service. And a lot of people don't do the math. Oh, they actually have to drive from their home base to the airport, drop me off, then back to their home base. You know, it's, you know, Uber and Lyft. One thing I failed to mention, Mark, I was going, this trip for us was about a two and a half hour trip. Yeah. This trip for us is about a 90 minute trip. Yeah. So when I say $120 for an hour and 45, I mean, they start, well, oh, wow. That, how do they do it for that cheap? Yeah. So I, I would put a time frame on that, especially those outlying cities that are 30 minutes away that we serve outside of Kansas City Metro. You know, that's a two hour and 15 minute trip for us. It's only, it's only $60 an hour. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. They haven't thought about that. No, but I exactly. can't. I like where I'm going with. So before I let you go, Mark, I, we do have a special Uber plus 25 vehicle. What's that mean? Well, whatever the Uber cost was, we'll pull it up on your app in your driveway. And whatever it is, it'll be $25 more than that. For the <laughs> that could be dangerous, it sounds like. I mean, you, you probably have to know what an Uber, because, man, I'll tell you, sometimes Uber, you know, I got a quote. I live 45 minutes from LAX. One time I got a $250 quote from them because four or five planes landed at one time yep. and everyone was taking taxis. It was funny. I'd never seen it before, uh, but sometimes like if they offer like a, sometimes their rates are stupidly low. Plus yeah, well, I know from my, from my apartment to the airport all day long in, a, in an XL, which is their nicest, it's $68. Okay. So you, yeah. The point is, you know how much that's going to be in that vehicle, and that's the key, right? Not well, talking about Kia. Drivers, I'm bringing it on. They're Uber drivers anyway. So the yeah. Uber plus 25 is my 25. Yeah. And your yeah. navigators, you're not buying 2022 navigators. Yeah. Buy the 2016 with 110,000 miles on it. And I it's clean, $29, right? $29,000 for it. Yeah. And it's clean. And look, that's that's the key. Right, clean, uh, uh, detailed once a month, washed every day, uh, yeah. smells good, and you know, um, you know, when, when we book it, then again, you just build rapport with these people. And if you have people, hey, we're wanting a bachelorette party, but well, we only have a few simple rules in our car, and we go, okay, like what are they? Well, you can't smoke, including we. We don't, we don't allow you to smoke. Yeah. Uh, you can't have sex in the car. They always laugh at that one, right? <laughs> um, you can't be throwing up drunk, and you can't wear glitter. Oh, glitter is terrible. We, it's all, I mean, you're just building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been doing this so long. You're, you're well practiced at, you know, you, you bring comedy in whenever you're doing, you know, right. what this is, which is a sales call. Whenever you're well, doing something. Like, yeah. If you be can be yourself. lighthearted. Don't be afraid yeah. of them. Exactly. Be yourself and don't undersell what you're worth, but you, there has to be some worth there. And all you have to be better is, is the companies in your town. You don't have to be better than me. No, it, that's a great point. That is I, a I'm great glad point. that the, the fruit, no offense to my fellow driver, no offense to the driver, but I, I had a driver call me yesterday and she sent me her pay stub for one of the largest companies in the city. She's getting $30 a ride, even if it's two hours. Wow. That's so she sent me a pay stub, $900 for 30 rides. I said, the minimum you would have made with me was 15 yeah, which made me feel good that I'm taking good care of my drivers. No, one one hundred percent. Yeah, that that's crazy. That seems that seems like it's really low. There was one other thing I wanted um, to go over. Oh yeah, so um, and look, this isn't going to work. Uh, I got this idea, uh, and I was talking to my client about it out of New York. Uh, we were talking about Black Lane, and he said they charge so much. I don't know how they do so well, and when I started looking at their offerings, like you got to look at what these really successful companies charging premium prices, what are they offering? What are they doing? Right. And one thing they do is they include a meet and greet. Now I know you cannot do this at every airport, Correct. but if it's something you can do, um, you know, that's how you can charge premium rates. I know when I'm getting off a plane and I've just flown for, you know, God knows how long might've had a delay layovers, traveling is stressful. Um, you're giving them certainty. And when you get off the plane, having to try to find the car, because I've actually 
I, whenever I go to another city, I try to use my clients because I want to experience what their clients experience. It helps me better do the marketing. And this one time I wasn't able to find where I was supposed to get picked up. And so, you know, I always try for the meet and greet now, just because I like to get there. The driver's got my name. It's just a cool experience, you know, and you, you feel like you're Is that really the only thing you found different that they were doing. Um, well, no, no, this is just one of the ideas that okay. I'm saying that um, if you can offer a meet and greet, you know, try, you know, I, I would keep my price higher and just say it's included. Here's the thing. And me and Timothy were talking about this before we started recording. You're not trying to close every person, right? right. Really what you're trying to do is close the best clients, the ones that could be repeat, the ones where 100%. money isn't as much of an option. What do they value? The number one thing people with lots of resources value is time, right? Stress-free. And certainty. Time, yeah. certain certainty, and low stress. And that's why they're calling. And that was one idea I actually had. This has not been tried in the wild. But, you know, if they say you're too much and Granted, at that point, it might be too late, but, you know, you always agree with them. Don't get mad. Um, say, you know, you're, you're right. We do charge more than Uber and Lyft. What were you looking for, you know, by booking a car service, right? right? And for most people, it's got to be certainty, you know, time. Um, and also these days, you don't know how much Uber and Lyft's going to be. If you get to the airport, you know, with LAX, you have to take a shuttle to this other lot. So that takes time. And then the price might be, you know, who knows what the price is, uh, especially, yeah, with that's another thing. Airports where you have to take a shuttle to another lot, it just adds on so much time and kind of a hassle. Yeah, and if you park so, in a satellite lot here, you're adding 30 minutes to your, to your trip day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it wasn't our time worth. Yeah. So essentially, my rebuttal was let them sell themselves, right? They yeah. called you for a reason. They called you for a reason. Admit, look, we charge more than Uber and Lyft. We are not, you know, uh, you know, uh, an app right. car company. What were you looking for? Um, what was important to you when you were booking this? So just just an idea, but um, I actually well, love all these. Again, like <clears throat> folks in the group that are watching this, you know. Those of us, you know, our, our group is way too quiet for me. I'd love to just like put a stick of dynamite in there and blow it up sometimes, right? But don't be afraid. I mean, I'll, I've built a successful business, but I'm still new in this business. So I've got a couple mentors, um, believe it or not, uh, and Mark knows who one of them is, that was a big critic of mine a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We just spent an hour, almost an hour on the phone this morning. He called me. So, <laughs> and, and guess what? He shared a very valuable piece of information with me. Um, I'm not going to say it's top secret, but it's a piece of information I'm going to go out and start using, like, you know, today. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and this is a guy that, you know, we got an argument over what roll a vehicle out for less than a thousand an hour. Well, now, you know, he started liking all my posts, and, and now we've become friends. And yeah. now we have funny how that partner. happens. <laughs> we have a referral partner now, Mark in Cleveland, you know, if you know yeah. who I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, sure. And, but I mean, he, he gave me some valuable advice today. Yeah. Well, valuable he's been in the advice. industry. I, I believe I know who you're referring to. And he's been in the industry a long time. And yep. I, that's another great tip, man. Talking to people who've been there, done that, if they will, you know. And if they will, guess what? They're not your kind of people anyway. No, exactly. Because collaboration is better than competition. Exactly. And even, even the, I've never been, a, so there's three things. You'll share stuff with everybody. There's things you'll share with this close friends. There's things you'll share with nobody. I get all yeah. that, right? But I'm not afraid to share some things with my competition here in Kansas City. I just know they won't do it. Yeah. So that it doesn't hurt me. I mean, Mark has other clients here in town besides me. We never run into them. There's plenty of business for us. Well, so, I mean, you know, I'm never afraid of that. So, and this is a great lesson I've just learned over time. Um, especially when you create content, you really do want to give away your best stuff, Be, you know, give away the idea, sell the implementation. Um, right. This is kind of a whole nother subject, but most people, even people watching this video, very few will implement any of these things. Right. Highly suggest you do. If you want to close more jobs, everything Timothy went over is just, I know it works because I listen to his calls. I know he closes a, a ton of leads in my 
probably the other most successful client with regards to close rate. He closes like 55%. He does the same thing Timothy does. They get on the phone with every client. Granted, his average ticket price is a bit higher, but he's getting on the phone, finding out about them. And, and yeah. And here's the interesting thing, Lamar. Our, our ticket prices are going up every month. Now, I, I, don't, I don't have a rhyme or reason to it other than the, these repeat customers when they come back in full butter. Yeah. So we got them on that initial discount. So I yeah. think there's some I think there's some correlation there. Yeah, oh, it's so worth it. Look, that first time client discount, that is such a great idea because really what he's just trying to get them to experience his service. Exactly. I know all of you watching this believe that your clients are very satisfied that you provide excellent service. You just need to get them to give you a shot, right? And so, awesome. Hey Timothy, I got to run, man. Hey, thank right. you so much for doing You're this. I love doing these and we look forward to our next one and you know keep the comments coming, keep the questions coming. I'll answer any question in the group. So feel free to post questions there. We'll be glad to help you as best we can. Awesome. Cool. Mark, thanks thanks man. so much. Have a great weekend.